hello and uh, welcome back for another video in the series uh, I'm trying to be quiet because it's it's pretty early here um, but we're gonna talk about complex collision and simple collision today and how to do it properly uh, because I see a lot of videos that say uh, you know you're having issues with collision on an object and you want to get your collision to work just uh, so just go into the project or the settings for the the static mesh and turn on complex collisions and uh, don't do that uh, that's a bad idea and we're going to talk about why that's the case and how to do it properly so I'm opening up Unreal Engine 5 and uh, this is the same for Unreal Engine 4 the collision really hasn't changed and I don't expect it to uh, when Unreal 5 comes to full release and I've got Blender open in the background and we're going to take a look at um, some object collisions and then how to actually create them all right, so uh, if we were good to go and have a look at an object, I'm going to grab a, just a random decorative object and look at it here. Uh, let's see. We've got, for example, this bonfire here. If I grab this bonfire up here in the top and uh, it is under the show tab, you can turn on these settings to show simple collision and show complex collision. So this is the simple collision mesh for this object. And if you are using the default settings for importing your static meshes into Unreal Engine, uh, then what will happen is it will auto generate a collision mesh for you. So you don't necessarily have to make one. Uh, and sometimes this is fine. So there are a lot of objects uh, like, for example, this crate here, if I show the simple collision on this object, it's a box. It's it's not a super complex object. And so you can use the auto-generated collision for this object, and it's not going to be a problem. And for any objects like this that are convex and fairly simple in shape, that's totally fine. You can use the auto-generated collision. When people run into problems is when they start to use concave objects like doorways for example if you're creating a doorway if you're creating uh, maybe a bridge that has a railing and there's like a gap in the middle for you to walk through that's a concave object and the reason that it's a problem is because simple collision can't do concave shapes and so how do you fix this well the suggestion that I've seen from a lot of people is just to enable complex collision and what that does if I go through here and I hit show let's turn off simple collision and turn on complex uh, is it's essentially using the static mesh of the object and you can see the complex collision here complex collision mesh here is essentially just a duplicate of the object's static mesh itself the reason that that's a problem is because now you're rendering every not rendering, but you are you are utilizing uh, the polys for uh, all of the polys in your objects twice, essentially, right? So you're loading the whole static mesh twice. So you're essentially doubling the load on your processing system by using complex collision. And sometimes the complex collision doesn't necessarily do it correctly anyways. If you have... Um, I've had a couple of times where I've used complex collision when I was learning how to do this and found, for example, that it didn't draw it perfectly around the object for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, but uh, you don't really want to do this. And it's because, you know, there's a much more efficient way of doing this. If you think, for example, you have a complex looking doorway where you have, you know, a door handle and you have, uh, you know, all sorts of different panels on the doors and a door frame. Do you want complex collision turned on for that? No, because you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, to be utilizing the 200 polys in your, uh, you know, your door handle and your door frame. Again, just for the sake of collision, you could get away with like 12 polys by using a proxy mesh. And so that's what we're going to set up. I'm going to show you how to do that. And what that will do is essentially create a simple collision mesh. Uh, that is just using simple collision, so there's no there's no you know complex shape to it uh, as your as your collision mesh. Now, in order to do that, you need to turn off uh, the auto generation of collision meshes in Unreal Engine on import. So on this object here, if you go down to your import settings 
And when you go to import your meshes, if you uh, drag and drop your meshes into like from your file explorer into your uh, your content uh, content folder, what's going to happen is it's, you're going to get a pop up window with a whole bunch of options of like how do you want to import this object? It will be in there also, so you don't have to do this. Uh, you don't have to do this in this window. You can do it when you're importing your mesh. Uh, and what you want to do is down here in your import settings under generate missing collision, you want to tick that off. Then when you import your object, uh, it won't generate any collision meshes. And so it'll, it'll only use the custom collision that you are importing. Uh, so turn that off so that it doesn't generate any collision. And then we're also, also going to search in the settings for uh, customized collision and you want to turn that on and so you're going to use the custom collision that you're importing along with your mesh and I'm going to show you how to set that up in blender and then import it here so that it works correctly so let's go ahead and move over to blender and I will show you how to get this set up so we're gonna go in here I have my fancy new default crab uh, you can change your default object when you load into blender by the way just by overwriting the uh, the default uh, load file uh, which you do in file uh, default save startup file and it'll overwrite your existing startup file and then I'm going to create a object and I'm just gonna create something like super simple just like for the for the purposes of demonstration here uh, because we don't need something that is super complicated Now this is an example of an object that will not work with simple collision because it is uh, concave. So it's got this hole in the in the middle. So this would be, for example, like a bridge. Um, and actually, let's let's make it a bridge. Let's make it a little bit a little bit longer, and that'll be fine for this. So if you tried to generate simple collision from this automatically, what it would do is it would just draw a box shape around this because it can't do the it can't do the concave parts of the mesh. And so you would either have to use complex collision or you would have to use uh, um, custom collision, which is what we're going to do. I'm actually going to make a slightly more complicated bridge um, just because I want to sort of demonstrate the reasons why you would maybe not want to use complex collision for this uh, and how you can do it with, uh, with custom collision instead. All right, so now you can see that we have this object here, which we want to have collision on. Uh, and this is still, if you were to generate simple collision around this, it is still just going to draw a box around it because uh, it can't do the concave portions of this. And this, as you can see, is a reasonably dense object. It's not super dense, but it's 2000 verts, which is, you know, a decent amount. Uh, but if you were to use complex collision for this, uh, it would essentially double the number of verts that are being called for this object, right? So instead of uh, 2,000, it would be 4,000. And so by turning on complex collision, you're going to be doing that essentially for every object that you have it enabled for. So let's make a proxy mesh for this object that is very low poly that we can use as our collision mesh. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to name this, and this is actually an important part of the process. You want to give this, you want to give this a name, which is fairly specific. Uh, I'm just going to call this bridge, and there is a reason for that, which we're going to come back to in a second. And then we're going to create our collision mesh as a separate object. So for the bottom here, I'm just going to uh, let's see here. I'm just going to draw a new one. And one thing that I like to do when I'm creating collision meshes is just give them a different color. Uh, you can do that by adding a material. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna save this, save this information, uh, but just so that you can tell where you've made collision and where you haven't. It's not a big deal on something simple like this, but if you're making something complex, say you're making like a house that has, you know, doors and stairways and a whole bunch of other 
other stuff in it, then you, you want to be able to tell where you've made collision and where you haven't. All right, so this is our collision mesh. So everything that's in green is going to be our collision. And the reason I've made it out of separate parts is because, uh, of course, simple collision can't do you know, concave shapes, but it can do convex shapes and you can have multiple of them. So this uh, collision setup for this is gonna be made up of three different shapes. And this is how you get the concave shape using simple collision only. And this will work for doorways, this will work for bridges, it'll work for pretty much anything. Now, in order to get this into Unreal Engine, you need to tell the software which parts of this mesh are actually static mesh and which parts of it are only going to be used for a collision. And that's pretty simple to do. The way that you do it is uh, with the naming convention. And the reason that I said that we should have a very specific name for our object is because if you have lots of uh, objects in your scene, uh, sometimes you, you want to make sure that you are uh, having separate names for each ob object, which are unique identifiers, because you have to use the specific and exact name for the collision boxes. So if I were to uh, use, see it says bridge, if I were to use, uh, you know, bridge underscore one or bridge with a capital B instead of a lowercase b, then your collision won't work. It has to be exact. So the way that you do this is you go UCX underscore uh, and then the name of your object. I usually just copy and paste it so that I know, know that it's going to be exact. And then underscore zero one. And you can add as many numbers to the end of this as you want and it will load. So you can have multiple different collision boxes. So I'm gonna do that for these other cubes. So this will be 02 and this one will be 03. And the names are exact, so it has to be exact. So if this is bridge, then this has to be UCX underscore bridge, and then the number. And that's really all you have to do in order to get your collision set up. So let's go ahead and export this uh, as an FBX, and then we'll import it into, into Unreal Engine. And so the way that you would do that is to select everything, because you want to make sure, uh, I mean, different people have different export settings for their static meshes. But when I'm exporting an FBX, I usually have this selected objects only turned on. Uh, so you want to make sure that you are definitely exporting your static mesh and also the other uh, components with it. So all of these will be in one in one FBX file, essentially. So I'm just going to save this on the desktop and call it a collision example. All right, so now back in the engine, uh, we're going to import this and do that I'm just going to open the content creator and drag this in and let's have a look now at the settings so on our import settings the one thing that we need to make sure of is here where it says generate missing collision that that's turned off and it's because we're importing our own collision we don't want it to generate anything I'm also going to tell it not to create materials because this object doesn't need any materials so you can see that it imported our static mesh and the collision meshes that we added to this are not visible here. So they're not part of the object. You can see uh, if you look at this here that we don't see those, we don't see those objects anywhere. And it's because they were converted to collision. So if I go up here to show simple collision, uh, you can see that it is using that collision mesh that we created as the collision mesh for this object. And down here in your collision settings, uh, under collision complexity, it'll say uh, you have a couple of different options here. Uh, some people say use complex as simple, don't do that. Um, we're going to use simple collision as complex or leave it at project default. Uh, use simple collision as complex is fine because then uh, what it's going to do is it's just going to use the simple collision mesh, which we just created, as complex collision as well. And we have customized collision enabled. So now if I go ahead and bring this into the, into the world, uh, let's take our little bridge here and it looks a little bit large. Maybe I'll just 
shrink it a little bit. You can see that we can now walk through it even though it is concave and our collision is working on all on all sides where it where it should be. So we've managed to make our collision for our scene uh, and we have significantly reduced the complexity of the geometry that's in our scene. When you think about how poly dense the objects in the original collision mesh would have been if we were to use a complex a complex collision, a, the the mesh that it would use uh, is over 2,000 polys. So that's a you know a decently poly dense mesh, but we've reduced that down to 24 polys. So from over 2,000 polys down to 24 is a pretty significant reduction in the complexity of the geom geometry that's going to be in your scene. And so whenever I'm whenever I'm creating objects for for the world, this is essentially how I would do it. This is just uh, good to it's good to get this to be sort of part of your habit of creating assets for uh, for the world, so that you know that your collision is going to work correctly on everything that you create. So that's it for uh, for this this video. So until next time.